Thank you for watching my video. My name is Mr. Charles Wenigen. In this video tutorial, we are still on dielectric material. So in this video, we will discuss on complex permittivity. Complex permittivity, but before we proceed on this, I would like to say, please, if you like my video, subscribe to my channel, comment, and like. Thank you once again. So in this case, we are talking on, we are still on dielectric material. We have treated um, dielectric material last, um, that we have defined dielectric material last week. So in this, in today's, being this week, we will discuss on permittivity and other related dielectric material topic as well. So let's start from this. So in this case, Complex permittivity, the product of the relative permittivity of the dielectric material and permittivity of free, of free space is known as complex permittivity. What I'm trying to explain here is, you know, in chemistry, there is different, there is different between reactants and the product. So, by the word used, the product of the relative permittivity of the dielectric material and the permittivity of a of free space is known as complex permittivity. It means once we say the product, it means the finishing product of relative permittivity. For instance, if we say one plus one is equal to two. The equal to 2 is the product of 1 plus 1. That is what I mean by the product of the relative permittivity is the dielectric material. The, and the product of the relative permittivity of the dielectric material and permittivity of free space is known as complex permittivity, which means the combination of the two. But the product, which I am trying to explain here, is the product of relative permittivity which it involves the outcome of the reactant. The outcome of the reactant will give the answer to the product of the reactant, which means the product of the permittivity of the free space and the permittivity, the, the product of the relative permittivity of the dielectric and the permittivity of the free space. They combine to produce complex permittivity. So the value of complex permittivity will always be equal to relative permittivity because the permittivity of free space is, is equal to 1. From this definition, you can get to understand that the product of the relative permittivity of the dielectric material is it's just like when, a, when someone asks you 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So what, they are, what I'm trying to explain here is this product plus the product of this plus uh, the, the relative of free space. Product is 1. Relative um, the relative permittivity of the dielectric of material is 1 and the, the, the permittivity of free space is the same thing as in 1 so both of them they are 1 1 so in that case from the definition we have to say is known as complex permittivity from there We have to say the value of complex permittivity will always will always be equal to relative permittivity because the permittivity of free space is equal to one, which means that each and every one of them is the product of each other. One, one, one. The free space of permittivity is one. 
the 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 value of complex permittivity is one. The relative permittivity is the same thing as in one. The value of dielectric constant or complex permittivity varies from one dielectric material to another. What does that mean? It means that if, for instance, air is one, that does not mean that vacuum will be one. If the vacuum is one, that does not mean that air will be one. It varies. The value of the electric constant or complex permittivity varies from one dielectric material to another. It varies all depending on the dielectric material you are to use. Remember when uh, what I I told you about uh, a capacitor because all these things is they are all using capacitor. So in that case, I told you that we have um, AC capacitor, we have AC DC capacitor, we also have DC capacitor, and in that case, we also have polarized and non polarized capacitor. Those things, the names of those capacitors determine by the dielectric material. So in that case, if you are to use polarized capacitor, all depending on the name of the dielectric material. So it varies, and if you are to also use non-polarized, it's also determined by the name or by the dielectric material you are to use. So that is why I say the value of dielectric constant or complex permittivity varies from one dielectric material to another. Now look at the standard values of permittivity and uh, complex permittivity. There are various types of um, the, the standard which they have been grouped in types of uh, complex permittivity. The value standard will be given to you in short time. Now, some standard values of um, complex permittivity for common dielectric material. There are some standard values of um, complex permittivity which I will show you right now. So in that case, just as I explained, this one is A. A is 1.5005. It's 1.005. And pure vacuum is 1.0. And the uh, mica is, you know, mica is fall under non-polarized capacitor. Mica is from 5 to 7. Paper is from 2.5 to 3.5 and the wood is from 3.5 um, is from 3 to 8 and glass is from 3 to 10 and metal oxide powder is from 6 to 20 and etc and so on and so forth all these are the standard permittivity uh, complex permittivity of a material or you can also call it a constant uh, um, also call it another name of it is uh, dielectric constant. That is another name of it. Dielectric constant of a, a material. If you cannot call it, a, if you cannot call it a complex, then permittivities. You can also call it dielectric constant of a material. So you have seen the material being the standard dielectric material, how it has been uh, arranged in order. So in that case, capacitor can be classified according to the properties. Capacitor can be classified according to the properties and characteristics of the insulating or di dielectric material. It means that the classification of the, the capacitor is classified by the properties and the characteristics of, the, of their insulating or dielectric material. And what are the characteristics and the, and the properties is what we are going to look into. So in that case, high stability and low loss capacitor. High stability and low loss capacitors 
Now, the capacitors that fall under this range of high stabilities and low and low load capacitors are mica, low K ceramic, and polystyrene capacitors are example of these types. And all these ones that I mentioned, they are under non-polarized capacitor. Do not forget. You know, non-polarized capacitor are those capacitors that does not have any sign of positive or negative. It means that the voltage can come from right, it can come from left to enter or to pass through the capacitor. So in this case, the high stability and low stability capacitor, which fall under it, all these capacitors that I'm about to mention are the ones that fall under it, which, which are mica, low K ceramic, and polystyrene capacitor. All these are examples of these types of high stability and low loss capacitor. Let's go and see others as well. In this area, this one is medium stability. Medium stability and medium loss. We have done, we have treated high stability and low loss. High stability and low loss capacitor, which I told you the capacitor that fall under it. Now, this one is medium stability and medium loss capacitor, which are paper plastic film and high K ceramic capacitor. All these ones are under medium stability and medium loss. Remember plastic film is under non-polarized capacitor as well. I want you to understand this very very well. Capacitor and plastic film is, is under non-polarized capacitor as well. K high ceramic capacitors are also under non-polarized capacitor. Now, polarized capacitor example for these types of capacitor are electrolytic capacitor and centillion capacitor. All these ones are examples of those that have fall, you know, in this area, they, uh, uh, there is no indication of high and low. The sample of it is polar capacitor are the type of um, example for this type of capacitors are electrolytic capacitor and centillion capacitor. These are not the only one that has positive and negative. We also have other ones that fall under electrolytic capacitor, under this um, polarized capacitor. Okay. Now, in, in more practical terms, in more practical terms, it represents the ability of a capacitor to store electrical energy in the presence of an electric field. How, what do you understand by that? In more practical terms, it represents the ability of a material to store electrical energy in, in the presence of an electric field. It means that each of those dielectric material which I have just mentioned, their work is to store electrical energy in the presence of an electrical field. That is their function. That is why when we are talking of capacitor, we talk of um, capacitance of the capacitor. And we have other things that we also put in consideration, which I mentioned the voltage, I mentioned the, the, the temperature, I also talk about the so many of them that I mentioned so far in terms of if you are to consider taking any capacitor. I think we see on next week.
Thank you once again for watching my video. Please, if you like my video, subscribe to my channel. See you next week.